Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning as we gather together for to be in the presence of the risen Lord who uh, promises to gather with us. And so we're grateful to be here, whether we're online or here among us. So here's the thing. 1864, a guy named Jules Verne, uh, the author, wrote a book, a science fiction book in the 19th century, a unique book for 19th century literature called, do you know what it's called? Journey to the Center of the Earth. Now, I've not read it, but I've read a synopsis, and here's the deal. Basically, the, the story goes like this. A professor in Germany receives this, I think, a letter or a document that says, if you go to this particular volcano in Iceland and you journey through the center of that volcano, you'll go to the center of the earth. And that's the journey that that professor went on with, uh, with a compatriot in that story. Now, we're not going to journey to the center of the earth, but here's the thing. I mean, Jules Verne wrote that book because human beings have always been fascinated by what's in the center of something. And so at St. Luke, we're going to begin a process today, uh, going months into the future, but beginning today about discovering the center, the core what are our core values as a congregation? Uh, and what, how could we articulate them and be really clear about them? And so we'll talk more about that as our worship continues. We're going to look at what does God value most? What is the, the core of who God is? And what do we take from that as we think about our life together at St. Luke? All right. Uh, grateful that you're here again, and let's begin our worship with our first hymn, How Firm the Foundation. Please stand. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This 
This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for your unending, unchanging love. We depend upon it. We need you. You are the rock in which we stand, our firm foundation upon which we build our lives. As we begin to explore our values together by your Holy Spirit, show us what you see in us, this body of Christ called St. Luke. Bring to mind the important core values that make us who we are and you desire us to be. We ask this in the name of the one in whom we are called together, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So you might be asking yourself, Pastor Mike, why are we doing this? Why engage in this process? Well, there's a couple of reasons. We began actually being in the process of looking at our core values and articulating them. We're living by them anyway, right? But it's just getting more clear and crystal clear about them. We began that process prior to the pandemic in our council retreat. And then the pandemic hit. As we got, went through the year, uh, we discovered that things are just changing. Life around us is changing, as you, we all have experienced. We all know this. Inherently, we know this in our bones. And it's the same with the church, how we are as a congregation and our mission together. Certainly, the core mission of, of reaching people for the gospel of Jesus Christ never changes. Live, learn, unleash will not change. How we are worshiping, yeah, you know, at some point later on, years from now, that might change. It always is changing because people change. But regardless, in the midst of all the changes that we experience in the 21st century, what remains unchanged? God remains unchanged. God remains unaffected. God is not anxious about the changes we experience. God is, as the scriptures proclaim, as Jesus said, I am the rock upon which you build your life. That's a solid foundation that goes unchanged. So as a Congregation, what remains unchanged? Mission, how we carry out mission, how we carry out mission, generation to generation, that might change, but the core of our mission doesn't change. It's been around since Jesus instituted the church and gave us the gift of the body of Christ called the church. So we're going to look at these core values. What, are, what remains unchanged in our life together? Now, we have experienced, here's what, they, here's what happens in a post-pandemic world. As people have gone through a pandemic, people have rediscovered some deeper core values about their personal lives that maybe they've forgotten or maybe they've let go. Like, maybe somebody who was working a lot prior to a pandemic, forced to be at home, to work from home with their family, and all of a sudden they rediscovered that, you know what, I've been putting my family on the back burner for all these years. I need to recover the core value of my family. That from this point on, that's not going to change. My, my whole way, my worldview has changed because I was forced by a pandemic to work at home. Or 
my health. A person might say, I'm core, one of my core values is I've discovered through a pandemic that my health is vital. Based on certainly maybe a person's gotten corona or threatened by it. Certainly we all were. Or maybe they, because they were home, they had some time. They bought some workout equipment. They stopped going to the gym and they realized, I can work out at home. And now my core value is saving money. But pandemics changed and reshaped and refocused a person or persons or a family on particular core values that give life for the future. And that's us as well. A congregation is no different than an individual because individuals have bodies and lives and so do congregations. Congregations are, are organic organizations. We're not a club. We're not a business. We are what Jesus calls us, a body of Christ. And if it's a body, it's a living organism, organically living together and moving together with, as Jesus says, the head of the church, Jesus. He's the brain. We are the body. And so we take our cues from him. And so if our life together has an organic, living nature to it, which it does, unlike any organization in this planet, on this world, that is the church around the world, we have core values too, just like an individual does, a family does, and so on. So we look at that picture. It's ironic that, that Aaron chose that picture because I was thinking about, he and I were just of the same brain this week. He asked me, what kind of picture would you want for this series? And I thought, I want a picture with like a core, looking at a core or something. And in my mind, I had a bicycle wheel. That's exactly what I was thinking. And this morning, I was thinking, I was going to bring my bicycle wheel in. And I got here this morning and went, oh, shoot. Should I go home and get my bicycle wheel? And I'm like, nope, duh, I don't have time. Then I come in here, and I'm like, Aaron had the bicycle wheel picture too. Awesome. Here's why this is so important. Because if you look at a bicycle wheel, think about this. What remains the most stable part of that bicycle wheel? The hub. Rarely does a person have to change a hub of a bicycle wheel. I've had to change spokes. I've had to change tires. Rim similarly, generally can be pretty solid too, but certainly the hub. They make the hub purposely the most solid part of that wheel. Because everything depends on that, the, the integrity of that hub. And everything, out, everything flows from it. Right? The spokes are in tension from the hub to the rim. If you think about a church, this is a picture of the church for me. Our core values, our core mission, our core vision is the hub. And everything we do are the spokes going outward to the world. And those spokes, and every spoke might get weakened, and we pay attention to it, and we tighten it. But those core things never change, and that's what keeps us moving. Whether it's a, like a bike on a rough road, or a not-so-rough road, or a road with potholes, or a trail, or a smooth road, regardless, a spoke might get affected, but the hub does not. So as the church moves through, times of difficulty, times of rapid change, a post-pandemic world. What doesn't change is our hub. How we do things, those folks, that might change. Or those things might need attention, might have been weakened by the times we're in. That's why this is so important. And so we think about God. If you had to answer the question, what does God value most? What would you say? It's a seminary question. We could spend weeks on that question alone. And how would you know to answer that question? What would you say? Think about it for a second. What would God, what does God value most presently? If you look at the scriptures, you look at the life of Jesus, his behavior, his words, the prophet's words from the Old Testament, the creation story. These are all clues to getting close to God's values. Behaviors, words, stories, intentions. Are, if we are to study God, we would say grace, peace, life, breath. Look, in the beginning, God gave Human beings, what? Breath. Give, gave life through breath. 
I mean, there, we, those are just a few of the things we could say. That's what God values most, people. But the, reason, the way we get there is through our own experience, certainly, but also through the scriptures and through Jesus. So let's take a moment. Uh, Joanne is going to read some words from scripture from Isaiah 43, as well as Paul's words. And as you hear these words of scripture, in particular Isaiah 43, there's, these are God's words through Isaiah to the people of Israel who are in captivity. And they're articulating God's heart for them what God values most, as they are in difficulty. Think about and hear these words. Jonah, please. Good morning. As Pastor said, I'm Joanna, and I will be reading the lessons this morning. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 40, verses 1 through 7. Starting at verse 1. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you, I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of your Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt your ransom, Cush and Seba in your steed. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The second lesson is from Acts 20, verses 17 through 24. Starting from verse 17, from Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, you know how I lived the whole time I was with you. From the first day I came into the province of Asia, I served the Lord with great humility and with tears, and in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my Jewish opponents. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I declared to both Jews and Greek that they must Turn to God in repentance and faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem. Not knowing what will happen to me there, I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. We hear what's important for, for Jesus. Now the tax collectors and sinners 
were all gathered around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who did not need to repent. The Gospel of our Lord. Seated. So here Jesus tells a story of the hundred sheep and the shepherd leaving one to go look for the lost one. So we might conclude just from that story, just that story itself. And then you look at Jesus' behavior, how he lived that out, that what's important to Jesus, God incarnate, is someone who's lost. You hear Isaiah chapter 43, and you might conclude from just those words alone. You might conclude that what's important to God is protection. That when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When they go through the fires, they shall not be burned. Protection. God desires to protect us. And then God says, I will be with you. God's presence. Why did Jesus become incarnate? The incarnate one, God in the flesh, because what God values is his presence with us in every moment of our lives, good and bad. Or we might say, look, Pastor Mike, what matters most to God is just people. I mean, why does even God even say this to the people of Cap- Israel in captivity? Isaiah 43 that Joanna read. Because God cares about his people. He cares to remind them, look, don't be disheartened and discouraged. I know you're going through a fire. I know the floods feel, this, the life, the changes feel overwhelming, but they're not going to overwhelm you. You're not going to get burdened because I'm with you. And later on, one of my favorite verses in Isaiah, of all of Isaiah, one of the only times it shows up in the scripture is so clearly, God says, I do all these things in Isaiah, I think, verse 7, because I love you. Beautiful. So out of God's hub, God's core, comes all this behavior, all this reaching out, all of finding the lost ones. Because at his center, that was the most solid and rock solid, that doesn't change. And doesn't, doesn't change uh, for any stretch of our imagination. So if that's true for the nature of God, it is also true for the nature of the church, which is the body of Christ. So it behooves us to ask. That's why we're entering this journey together as a congregation. To be crystal clear. What are our collectively core values? Out of which everything we do happens and find consensus and unity. Because if we just stop today, and we ask you, we're going to ask you, we're going to get 30 different answers. There might be some commonalities, but generally there are going to be 30 different answers. That's somewhat helpful, but not so much. We need to get crystal clear consensus. Because as we move into the deeper in the 21st century, 2021, 22, the next decade, The challenges that we face as a congregation globally, like locally, and the church globally will not end. And it behooves us to live out of the core center of who who we are so that we can bless the world around us as God designs us to be and do that very intentionally and beautifully and directed by the Holy Spirit and filled by the same. So this morning, uh, there is you uh, may have received it on Friday. I'm not sure if you did. Certainly, Aaron did it. That question go out on Friday. 
the values question? It's going out today at 10.30. I do remember that now. Thank you, Aaron. So 10.30 today, you're going to receive an email with the first of, first of a few questions. But before I get to that question, let me ask you this. Remember that commercial in the late 70s, early 80s, maybe the 80s, Tootsie Roll commercial? Tootsie Roll, Tootsie Pop? And this little kid comes up and eventually comes to Mr. Owl. Mr. Owl, how many licks does it take to get to the center of the Tootsie Roll, Tootsie Pop? And the owl says, let me find out. One. It's a hoo-hoo. <laughs> and then he goes, crunch. Three. Three. Three licks it takes to get to the center of the Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop. I'm not going to crunch it. My wife actually asked me, she said, are you going to crunch your Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop? I'm like, no, that would not be good to be broadcast everywhere, this crunch. But here's the thing. How many licks, how many questions does it take for us to get to the center of our life together? A lot of them. But we're going to start with three. The first one today. So the first, for every two weeks, for the next six weeks, you're going to get a different question. And we value, we need your feedback. The first question you're going to get today and actually, I think you might get a paper today, too, if you want to write out an answer, if you don't want to type it out uh, through Google form. The question is this. In one sentence, what draws you to St. Luke? In one, just in one simple sentence, what draws you here? What gets you here? What is it? That's really helpful information for us. In two weeks, you'll get a different question. Two weeks after that, you'll get a different question. So three questions we're going to get closer to the center, the sweet center of St. Lutheran Church. Yeah? We good with this? Yeah. All right. This is a good thing for us. Really a great thing. Let's pray. Lord, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing among us and the powerful work you are doing in our hearts and minds. Thank you, Lord, that you value us. You sacrifice your life for us. And uh, we give you thanks for that. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would guide us in this process in the weeks and months ahead so that, Lord, we are aligned, fully aligned with your desire for us. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen.
Will you please stand as we confess together our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It says in the scriptures, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. My friends, Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. 
And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night Jesus was betrayed, our Lord took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray as the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So with your cups that you received as you came in, please take out the bread. The, uh, the, there's a two pieces of cellophane. The very thin one will, will allow you to access the bread. And before you eat it, take it into your hands and either give it to someone near you or to yourself saying, the body of Christ given for you. Now take the cup. And as you hold it, be reminded of these words that Jesus gave, saying it's your, to you or to someone near you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. Let us pray. Gracious God, you abide in us and we abide in you. Cleanse us by your word and move us, move through us to bear fruit of blessing to the world around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence that they may they lead not by fear but with love for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. You love us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love. Those who are poor, lowly, outcast, lonely, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all, especially Justin Baker, Bruce Ebert, Kate Klein, Joanna Mahoney, Aisha Marwi, Harry McCullough, Tesha Moore, Doug Rose, John and Rusty Savage, Rhonda Savage, KB Sharp, Mindy Sproul, Jean Weaver. We pray for the employment for Carlos. As well, we pray your blessing of comfort to those who grieve today. The family and friends of Kyle Mush, and the family and friends of Andrew Wilson. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So Pastor Steve is, he's not sleeping in. Well, he might be, actually, but he didn't forget to come here. He's, on, he's, on, he's out of town for the weekend, so uh, we are here together. Uh, so a few announcements as we uh, continue our life together. Uh, first, the Church Center app, which you saw, as you, be, you may have seen the picture when you came in. If you've not had a chance to download from the App Store your Church Center app, it's a great resource for our congregation to uh, get connected, to register for things, including like worship. Uh, simply go to church, go to uh, the App Store on Google or Apple and go to Church Center, church Center app. It's super simple. I, I did it this week. And then you just choose St. Lutheran Church, Columbus, Ohio, and you're good to go. It's pretty simple. And then you have access in the palm of your hand to all that we do here at St. Luke. Not everything, but a lot of stuff, right? A lot of stuff. Uh, Compassion International, uh, we have a table that we were supposed to have last week. We didn't really receive the materials in time, but today we do have the materials. Last week was Compassion Sunday, if you remember. And uh, we invited everyone to become a sponsor uh, family or individual to sponsor a child in a developing part of the world. And so you can, the table as you leave, right to the right of the doors, there are packets of kids or waiting sponsors. So it's a great way to put faith into action and to serve those in need. So if you just want more information or you want to take one of those packets, it'll give you information about how to then sponsor that specific child, okay? And lastly, uh, do-it-yourself service projects continue uh, faith Mission Welcome Home Kits. Uh, we were doing last, I think last month, LSS, Lutheran Social Services, Food Pantry, the take-home bags, the um, basics bags, excuse me. Uh, and this month we highlight Faith Mission Welcome Home Kits. Um, so if you want more information, you can go to the Church Center, Church Center app about that. Or also your Friday email newsletter gives you information about this do-it-yourself service project you can do in your home to support the work of faith mission this month, okay, just as we did with LSS last month. All right, I think those are the announcements for today. Oh, and then just a reminder that you're going to get the uh, question for values. We, uh, we really value your feedback on that. Thank you. All right, my friends, let's conclude our worship by standing, and we're going to sing our last hymn, but before we do that, Hear the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Go in peace. Unleash God's love.